Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this update for global stocks and commodities for the 4th of March. Uh, the title this week is uh, Volatility is Here to Stay, and um, that's certainly going to be the case for uh, a little while, and I think pretty much from, from here going forward uh, for the rest of the year and, and uh, whatever the market holds for us beyond that. Um, 2016 and 2017 were two incredibly low volatility and quiet years that were way, way below normal. And um, this is getting back to uh, some degree of normality. Um, it feels a bit scary because we've not, we've not had this kind of environment for a couple of years and people have really forgotten what volatility is all about. But um, this, is, uh, this is not an abnormal market by any stretch of the imagination. And it's still an extremely positive market. Um, I'm still very bullish about uh, about the opportunities, but it just means that you've got to change your method of operation to suit the market, and uh, and that's what I'll be striving to outline uh, in future weeks uh, through this um, uh, forum, but also through uh, portfolio analyst and uh, my other services as well. So let's jump in and uh, and take a look at um, uh, at the agenda for this week. So. A change of character, uh, particularly after the, the parabolic rise of January, was uh, was almost a given. And um, so we're seeing that now. Uh, clearly, there's been a significant shift in sentiment. Uh, we've gone from a situation where uh, uh, all people wanted to do was to buy the rallies, uh, sorry, buy the dips. Uh, and we've moved to uh, a position now where um, the market is all too ready to sell into any uh, any little rises that there's been. Now, I don't think the market is going to go down below the recent lows. Um, and last week's title was that the correction is over. Um, I just want to clarify that uh, because some people misinterpreted um, you know, what I covered last week, just looked at the title. Uh, if you go back and look at last week's video, I also then went on to say that we would get a volatile sideways trading range for a period of, of probably at least three months and perhaps longer. Um, and that's really what I meant by the fact that the, the correction is over. I think we've seen the, the big plunge, we've seen the lows, and now we get this volatile consolidation. And I want to look more uh, deeply at that in this video. Um, so there is a significant shift in sentiment, and that means that uh, that traders and investors need to play the game a little bit differently. Uh, we we can't just you know buy into any old small dip in the market and expect within a few weeks that the stock price is going to be higher because that um, is quite likely not going to be the case. Uh, also, just be looking at the normal uh, stock and commodity trend updates, and uh, for those that um, are uh, in portfolio analyst um, or perhaps thinking about trialing portfolio analyst. Uh, last week, I did a recap on emerging opportunities, and there was also uh, questions from members on uh, Australian resource stocks that, um, that actually threw up uh, at least one interesting opportunity. So that's what I'll be covering in this, op in this update. So let's look at the American market. First of all, uh, the S&P uh, closed down 56 points, 2%. That's a big, that's a big week down. Um, we had a, a strong turnaround the Friday before. Uh, we had a strong Monday, and the market looked like it was really going to head uh, head higher quite robustly. Um, but then uh, we had uh, a couple of triggers, uh, Jerome Powell and his comments on um, on inflation and the economy were, um, uh, I think, interpreted in a fairly negative way. <clears throat> but then that happens when the market is looking for an excuse. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Donald Trump uh, stepped up and decided he'd do some um, uh, some economic policy on the run and announced some uh, some tariffs on steel and aluminium. And that just absolutely punctured the uh, the market as well. Um, so. The, the basic premise I think that we've got is that it's a, going to be a volatile trading range for a few months. And I still still believe that between three months and six months is the likely period uh, of this range before we uh, very likely see new highs in the S&P in the latter half of this year. That, of course, doesn't mean that we can't make uh, profits because we can. We're getting deeper dips and we're getting faster 
rebounds. So the ability to make money um, is is actually it, it's a little harder, but it's also substantially uh, stronger as well. So uh, it's it's a very interesting market. Sell-offs are going to be triggered more easily now uh, because the market is looking for a reason to sell off. We've got a lot of uh, highly leveraged players in the market that were, uh, that were betting on all sorts of things, including the inverse volatility trade. Uh, we have no idea whether that has, has fully played out yet. It probably hasn't. And so there's still a lot of unwinding out there uh, to be done. And that's why we're going to see volatility for some period of time. Um, a lot of rallies are going to be met with uh, with selling again, so that these uh, highly leveraged traders can um, can readjust their position. But I believe this is an excellent trading environment um, because, and I'll show you some examples uh, in a minute. Uh, because really good stocks are uh, are going to turn around quicker than the index, and they're going to bounce back far harder than the index. And um, I'll, uh, I'll show you some examples on that, I think is the best way to do it. So last week I, uh, I covered why fundamentally and technically I thought the, uh, the correction was complete and I still stick by that in terms of the lows. Um, so just to recap and perhaps with a little bit of different data as well, uh, from a fundamental perspective, there is just absolutely no reason for a bigger fall and I won't elaborate any more on that, I've done it to death. Um, last week I uh, covered that uh, the recent earnings season was the strongest season of earnings beats in terms of percentage that we'd seen since 2006. Uh, another way to look at that is that this has been the strongest earnings growth in seven years. So whichever way you carve it, uh, corporate America is doing very well. The other thing that people are concerned about, of course, and this is really what uh, what triggered the sell-off on Tuesday with uh, Jerome Powell's comments, uh, is this fear about rising interest rates. Um, people seem to have it locked in that when interest rates go up, it's bad for the market. Uh, history shows that that's absolute rubbish. And um, in fact, I, um, I read just recently that uh, over the last uh, five decades, there have been nine periods where interest rates have been in a uh, in a rising um, period, and on eight of those nine occasions, the S and P index has gone up and gone up substantially, with uh, with a rise of forty percent in one instance. The only time of those nine when the S and P has gone down, uh, it went down by four percent. So to be concerned about rising interest rates is just ridiculous. And, and so you've just got to ignore the media and use this volatility to advantage where you're being presented with uh, a terrific opportunity. Um, so don't be turned off by what the media is, uh, is telling you. So let's look at it from a technical perspective. Um, we've had a very powerful reversal on, fe on February 9. So the correction started on the uh, uh, 30th of January. Um, we had a sell-off down to February 9, big reversal, and the the rebound went uh, through the 50% level, through the 61.8% level, and uh, and went um, significantly above that. That's a real sign of strength. If the market was weak and the institutions were looking to sell because they were worried about what was going to happen with the market, we would never have got back up beyond that 61.8% level. It just wouldn't have happened. We've also seen continued leadership from uh, from the NASDAQ. And uh, whilst the Dow was down 3% uh, last week, the S&P was down 2%. Uh, the NASDAQ was only down 1%. And it's always a good sign when, uh, when the NASDAQ is outperforming the other sectors. Uh, we also saw the Russell 2000 uh, pretty solid uh, as well. So th there's just no, um, there's no basis technically for this market to um, to sell off more than just these uh, these sort of erratic uh, moves in price, and as I mentioned last week, uh, the high yield junk bonds. Uh, if this was a, a more meaningful top in the market, the high yield junk bonds would be selling off. They'd be getting absolutely slaughtered, uh, and they're not. They've hardly moved. So the smart money in the bond market knows what's going on. Um, you've just got to try and look through this volatility uh, in the equities market where you've got a lot of highly leveraged players and you've got a lot of uh, inexperienced players. 
uh, as well. And that's what's leading to, um, to the volatility. So this has largely been about forced selling due to leverage, um, not because of fundamentals. Fundamentals leads to a change of trend and leads to a, a prolonged downward move. Forced selling due to leverage is something that fixes itself uh, fairly quickly, few weeks, few months, and uh, those highly leveraged players have, have made the appropriate adjustments. So um, that's the way that the American market sits at the moment. Now, the US dollar still holding uh, critical support. Um, hasn't really, it's just really bobbing up and down, but it, the good news is it's still holding support. So let's jump in and have a look at the uh, at the charts. Um, this is the S&P on a monthly chart, just to get a big picture perspective. So you can see we had uh, we had quite a quite a dip in um, in February. Um, it was a lot like August of 2015. We haven't really had anything much since. Uh, and then so far in uh, in March, of course, we've only had uh, two trading sessions, but. Um, you can see that we've we've closed well off the lows on uh, with a nice reversal on Friday night, but the uptrend certainly on a big picture level is well and truly intact. All right, now this is the chart that I want to um, I want to focus on. Um, so this is the S and P. Uh, the downturn started on the 29th of January, and then we had this really big reversal on the 9th of February. Let's just put a Fibonacci retracement scale uh, on that. And we can see that um, the S&P went straight back up to the 61.8 exactly. Um, that was on the 16th of February. It then turned down for a few days, which is exactly what you would have expected. Turned back down to the 50% uh, level. And then we had two powerful days up, which smashed through that 61.8%. So whatever else happens from here on in, that is an incredible sign of strength. And that's why last week I was confident enough uh, to, to say that I believe the correction lows uh, had been seen. Um, if you've been watching these videos for any period of time, you'll know that I'm, I'm reasonably conservative in, uh, in changes. I wait for the market to show me what's, uh, what's going on. I don't make predictions about the market. I just read it as it unfolds. And that strength is, um, is undeniable. Now we then got a reversal, and and quite frankly, I'm pleased that we have had this this pullback. If this market had just gone straight back up again in a V-shaped recovery, I would have actually been quite concerned, because that wouldn't have given the market any opportunity to unwind the excess that occurred in January. This parabolic move that occurred in January uh, has got to be consolidated uh, for the health of the market. Um, other, otherwise, uh, we're going to get a bigger fall uh, at another time if this if this was just a V-shaped recovery and went straight back up here. Um, so I, I never expected that, and I'm pleased that we've had this dip, and I now think that we'll get some sort of period of just uh, these sort of quite wild swings. It'll probably look like that for a while with the market just fluctuating up and down. Uh, but that's great. We can we can do really well in that sort of environment. Now, as you can see, the market then came back to the 38.2. It's amazing how much it's observing these um, these technical levels, and uh, we got a very nice reversal uh, on uh, on Friday night, uh, as you can see. So this is all perfectly normal. It's uh, it's a bit like if you th if you think about um, stretching a, an elastic band and and dragging it to one extreme and then letting it go, you tend to get a, a bounce uh, for a period and then that bounce will settle down eventually. Um, so I believe that's that's what we're going to see uh, in the market from uh, from here on in. Let's just look at the Nasdaq. So this is the QQQ, and you can see the NASDAQ did re rebound all the way to its pre-correction highs. So that's that's the relative strength in the NASDAQ, and that's a good sign. Um, and it's still much closer to its highs than the S&P was. And uh, if we look at the Russell 2000 for small caps, um, it didn't rebound um, quite as much as, uh, as the S&P. Um, well, it wasn't far off it. Um, so it's a very similar looking pattern, slightly weaker than the S&P, but look, nothing, nothing dramatic. Now, the other charts that I want to uh, highlight 
which again supports my view that uh, we've seen the lows in this correction, is some of the big cap stocks. Now this is Cisco, which is um, the best part of $200 billion market cap, one of the biggest tech stocks in the world. This is the, the highs pre-correction around uh, just under 43. And you can see we, we dipped, but it rebounded very, very quickly. It actually turned up uh, on the 6th of February um, before the actual, uh, the rest of the market and turned up much more strongly. And you can see it's gone back to, um, to exceed those highs very comfortably. In fact, it, it's been uh, back above those highs for most of the time. Um, I can assure you that would not be happening if the institutions were concerned about um, seeing lows uh, on a more protracted basis uh, down below this level. And it's, and it's the institutions that uh, really influence the prices on these really big stocks. These are so huge that the buying and selling of retail investors has absolutely no impact on this at all. So this is about institutions. And clearly the institutions would not have bid up the price of Cisco uh, if they thought this correction was, um, was going to get worse. Let's look at Intel, another uh, technology um, giant. And you can see we've rebounded very, very quickly to form, this was the pre-correction high, and we went back and formed basically a double top, which we pulled back from, but we're still quite close to that, uh, that double top. And just one more, and I could show you 50, but uh, just to make the point, this is Bank of America, so 300 odd billion dollar market cap company. Um, and it's also rebounded very, very quickly uh, basically hardly got below the 50 day moving average, let alone the 200 day. So when you look at the strength of these biggest companies uh, and you see them doing this, then you just know that the institutions are not, um, they're not dumping this stock. Um, the, the movement in the market is about over leveraged players that are being forced to readjust their position. And that is a temporary situation. And uh, the good news out of it is that it's going to present us with some great opportunities. So that's the American market. Let's just check in on the US dollar. So we're still basically holding this, um, this support level. And um, we're just getting a, a bit of an up-down movement that's really been in vogue now since, uh, since late January. So about six weeks of just going up and down and consolidating um, and picking the near-term direction of the US dollar is, uh, is anyone's guess, so I won't even try. Okay, let's move on to the Australian market now. Uh, not a lot to say here. The Aussie dollar uh, declined a little bit uh, down to 77.6. Uh, um, the S&P lost 71 points, 1.2% uh, for the week. So it actually did better than the US market, uh, but we're back down below the, that key 6,000 uh, point level again. And as I stated last week, um, there are opportunities in the Australian market. Um, I really see them in two categories. Uh, one is uh, a very select number of um, small to mid cap uh, industrial stocks. They're mostly uh, technology type stocks. They're, uh, they're mostly stocks with a global footprint or a global potential. Uh, they're high growth stocks and um, they're, they're quite volatile um, and we, we don't tend to see the smooth movement in, in an uptrend that we see in American stocks. They're very volatile. Um, it seems um, the day traders and, um, and short term market players tend to move those prices around far more significantly than what happens in the US. That's probably uh, a liquidity issue. Um, but there are some opportunities in Australia, and I certainly talk about them in, uh, in Portfolio Analyst uh, to a great extent. And there's been some great gains. You know, we've, we've had uh, quite a number that have, that have made more than 50% gain in, um, in just short periods of time. So that is a class of opportunity in Australia. The other class of opportunity in Australia is with the really small stocks. They might be resource stocks or they might be very small healthcare stocks or those of the like. But these are uh, companies that generally are not profitable yet. Uh, they're highly speculative, they're highly risky, and uh, you know probably only two or three out of 10 uh, actually work. Now I've presented a, a few of those in Portfolio Analyst, 
and um, and they've generally worked pretty well. Um, so uh, if, if you want to have a look at some of those, then certainly Portfolio Analyst is the place to go and have a look. But overall in Australia, uh, the number of opportunities is extremely limited by comparison and uh, it's a lot more risky and, you, and you've got to be a lot more patient. Let's just take a look at the Australian index just for the record. So nice move up on Monday and Tuesday and then we got heavy selling uh, into the end of the week and brought us back down under this uh, 6,000 point barrier. Uh, the Australian dollar is uh, is still just in this big picture overall range. Um, fundamentally, I believe it should be much lower, low 70s, um, but currencies will do whatever they want to do. There's a lot of working parts to currencies. So um, that uh, that is really just a long term target for me. Turning now to precious metals and not a lot to say here either. Gold uh, is seven dollars down to 1323, uh, really just following currency moves. And as I've been covering now for more than six months, uh, precious metal stocks, no change. And until there is, then I don't believe the sector is doing anything. Um, so yeah, I think we'll just uh, we'll just move on from that. Really, nothing more to say about precious metals. Uh, copper was down a little bit, down to three dollars eleven. Again, really just currency. Uh, crude oil's become fairly volatile and reacting uh, very much to inventory data, uh, but it uh, it dipped and then recovered. Um, the stocks are still struggling in the short term. But look, I think a long-term base is being carved out in uh, in crude oil and in uh, energy stocks, and higher prices are likely. But that could be three months, six months, twelve months away. I, I think it's a sector where um, you can start to slowly accumulate a long-term position, but only do it on the dips. I think is the only way to to play this uh, part of the market. So there's the copper chart. We've really been in this uh, $3 to $3.20 range now since uh, about October of last year. And there's the energy chart, uh, crude oil chart. So it has become, after a really nice uptrend leading into um, the end of January, uh, it's become very volatile and fluctuated around between 59 and, and 66 and uh, sitting in the low 60s at the moment. So to wrap things up, I believe, uh, as I said last week, I believe the lows are almost certainly in. Um, most stocks are going to be range bound for several months, uh, but the best stocks have already turned up to new highs uh, well before the index. And uh, I've got a long list of stocks um, that uh, that include Cisco and Intel and, and Bank of America and, and a whole bunch of other financial stocks and uh, and many, many others that uh, that I think are um, are going to be great trading vehicles. Buy a uh, buy a bit of a panic sell off and uh, just sit back for a few days or a few weeks and wait for the rebound. So um, I'm very excited by the period that we're uh, we're in now. I think reading chart patterns is absolutely essential. Uh, I don't think you can pin your hopes on the fundamentals uh, carrying the day. Uh, that's not to say that fundamentals are not and and valuations are not important. Um, they are important, but in this sort of market, they're going to play out over the longer term. Um, and markets can do extremely illogical and strange things over shorter periods of time. So if you're trading on the basis of fundamentals, then you might uh, you might do a bit of damage for a, a lengthy period of time. So uh, uh, abiding by the, the technical chart patterns, I think, is the way to make money in um, this sort of volatile range bound market. Uh, portfolio analyst this week, uh, there are some good buys that have set up and in keeping with my uh, normal approach, and that is I let the market show me which way that it's going. Um, we had a sell off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we got a nice reversal on uh, on Friday. So we've now seen some stability uh, and I would expect to see a bit of a rebound that uh, is probably a, a trading opportunity. So I think there's some good buys right now and I'll be covering that in Portfolio Analyst this week. Um, and uh, I think that's a great way if you're not uh, uh, if you're not in any of the other member services that I have, then that's a great way to stay plugged in on, um, 
on when when to buy and and what sectors are going to be the most productive. That's it for this week. There's my contact details for anyone who's not a, a member of the group, and uh, I'll be back with you next week. That's it for this week. Cheers.